Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 21 of Galileo Conquest. We left the last time while we were proceeding to rendezvous with the, the Clon Rickert station with another fuel tank. This particular autonomous fuel delivery and storage vehicle is known as Hell 3. It is the third generation of tank delivery type things. And it is an improvement over Hell 2 because it doesn't spin when I try to accelerate in one direction. We've aligned all the thrusters. We've also added the ability for the thing to control its yaw and rotation and everything else, basically. So the idea is it should be able to dock a little straighter because we've been spending way too much time photoshopping those pictures of this uh, spacecraft so that it doesn't look like all wonky, basically. I mean, it's a serious, like, PR issue when you have a building that's all out of alignment. Imagine how embarrassing it would be if you had a space station out of alignment. However, we are not yet in a situation to perform the full assembly because we still have that uh, solar panel there that is in the wrong location. Thankfully, the crew have been training for this, and instead of employing blunt force rocket surgery, they are uh, going to just carefully disassemble the parts. There, oh, wait a second, no, click on it. Thank you, disassemble, and it disappears into a big cloud of smoke. And I'm going to just tell the Kerbal developers that that smoke looked rather turbulent, and as any space artist should know, gas flowing out shouldn't become turbulent if it's in a vacuum because that would imply that it's encountering other gas. And of course, there's no other gas because we're in a vacuum, right? I mean, look, seriously, you don't want the viewers to think that this is being filmed on some sort of soundstage in an atmosphere or something. No, that would be completely ridiculous. You see, we're floating around in zero G. There's no wires there. That would actually be a fun mod to add wires and stuff on sound stages for all the <laughs> for all the Kerbals. I am constantly amazed at the number of flat Earth fanatics that come along to my videos and then uh, on the Kerbal Space Program videos claim that they are not actual real videos of spacecraft in space. I mean, technically they're right. But that in no way means that any of the other videos from NASA aren't actually real. Of course, they don't have problems with the flat Kerbin society, mostly because the curvature of Kerbin is about 10 times greater than that of the Earth. That, and of course, everybody on Kerbin works with the space program and gets to see it from space all the time anyway. Although at this point, I wonder why I'm talking about Kerbin, because that is just a mythical planet. Uh, the real world is, of course, Gale. The source of all life in the Galileo system. Anyway, as you can see, this thing is a whole lot more stable and we're able to get it aligned a lot better. It would be nice to actually have numerical outputs for the rotation, but look, you know, we've got it. it they're kind of wobbling around a bit, but you know, we'll be able to deal with those pendulous oscillations by tying them down a little. Now, it would be nice if we could use auto strut to you know, magically link these things uh, across their docking nodes, but I think the auto strut only applies to the, the parts that are on the same spaceship. Anyway, the next section will be the drive section, which will fit on the back here. Therefore, we need to send our crew home. After all, they will be needed to fly this thing up here. So finally, we get to test this uh, new generation of descent vehicle. I kind of like the look of it, to be honest. It does actually have plenty of... Delta V left, I could have probably shrunk that fuel tank quite a bit and made it look a little less silly. But actually, it the, the reason it was that length, of course, was because of those solar panels that were gingerly stuck on the side there. This was, of course, an amazingly innovative mission. It was, uh, as well as performing this very careful docking, I mean, we actually had uh, Valentina going out on EVA and performing important repairs to the exterior of the system. Uh, obviously, we had the whole issue where we had to smash up a solar panel, but, you know, uh, we're getting there. We're learning the ways. Hopefully, this spacecraft will be ready by the time we've actually identified a target that we can take it to. Uh, our space probes are out there. Uh-oh, wait, this is shaking a little here. We do not appear to have achieved a clean separation. Let's try... Oh, 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 physics, physics. Oh, thank you. Whew. 
I like the way that spins off. Makes it look extra dramatic. Okay, well, you know what's dramatic, of course? Is a hypervelocity re-entry with all the flaming and fire that that uh, involves. Look at the heat! Look at the cool food! We do have our food down there because we are barbecuing it, and of course we've already done that question about whether we can barbecue food on the heat shield. But one of these days it would be nice if SpaceX would do something along those lines. Although SpaceX recently announced that they are no longer going to be running their landing legs through the heat shield, so that changes their design. Yes, at a recent event, Elon Musk spilled all sorts of, uh, he shared all sorts of information about future programs. Red Dragon is cancelled because they figured out a better way to land on Mars. They're not having the landing legs coming through the heat shield because NASA, uh, NASA really likes going for safety and having things that go through the heat shield are always scary and require extra testing. And if they can skip around that, that would save them a lot of development time and get them flying faster. So, Project Clippet is extending out the tail of our space station. It is adding an engine and a landing craft. And uh, you may notice that it's using inflatable fuel tanks, or sort of fuel tanks that are basically soft. Anyway, um, I actually decided to do this live. This was one of those things where I streamed the whole thing on Twitch TV. So, in a moment, you're going to hear my live reaction as I uh, attempt to do this. I'm getting very concerned that I may have some trouble getting out of the atmosphere like this. Oh dear. Apple App's height is rising. Okay, and you know what? I have totally shallowed this thing out terribly. This is a real problem. I gotta get this. The problem is, what's gonna happen is I'm either gonna burn up or I'm going to get to an altitude that I need to ditch that second stage. Okay, here's the problem, right? I'm going to put this right along this. My upper stage doesn't have the stability I need to get through the atmosphere here. If I ditch these fins, I may not make it. Okay, I'm going to just fire that. Okay, um... Time to Apple Apps is not going to be fast enough. Okay, so we have to figure out how to get out of this situation. I am going to start tailing this up. Maybe, maybe I can ride this like an aircraft and get it into space. This is what the danger of doing things live, of course, right? That sometimes the ideas you have, you think, this is going to fly really well, and then you realize, actually, no, it's not. So we have plenty of fuel on board this. We are picking up speed, but I'm gonna hit my Apple apps very soon. Okay, I'm gonna point this higher. Yes, okay, so now... Right, this is a real problem because this thing does not really have an abort mode built into the launch vehicle. That was my, that was my foolish thing and I only kind of realized that after I got part way into space. And we have Valentina and Bill on board, and I'm not sure we actually have parachutes or anything for these guys. So the question is, can I get them anywhere approaching orbit? So we're now actually start, our speed is starting to go negative. We're actually starting to lose altitude. TWR is 0.63. We're basically not gonna be able to do this. You know what? I think what I'm going to have to do is try try uh, an emergency situation here, right? So, we're going to keep this nose up. Or something. Now we're moving at 1700 meters per second. The problem is that that is going to melt our spacecraft if we ditch this. But what we can do... Okay, so we can try an abort mode here. We can ditch... Uh, we can ditch this thing here, right? We can decouple that, but I'm gonna wait until I'm descending and then maybe the thing will kind of go flip backwards. Now, what kind of fuel do I have? Do I have any fuel in this? Oh, reaction control thrusters. I get reaction control thrusters at least. 
That should help us a bit. Decouple node. Okay. Well. That is really not what I wanted to have happen. So the rest of the vehicle broke up, unfortunately. Um, I don't have anything here that is going to help us. Let's get that gear out. Okay. What can we do to save everybody on board? Because our thrust to weight ratio is 0.6. Is there anything I can ditch? Jettison tank, I've got to sure jettison. Right, uh, okay, we jettisoned that, so that's great. And that has made our thrust to weight ratio worse. We do have some stuff here. We have a little bit of monopropellant I can use, I probably shouldn't do that. <sighs> yeah, um, EVA, uh, uh, okay, Valentina, no parachute, what happened? I thought she had a parachute. <sighs> Inventory, great. Bill. Oh, he survived! Valentina? She's... she's gonna survive. Go on! Go on! Bail out without a parachute. That's what she did. <laughs> Come on, you're my best pilot. I cannot have you... you fail me. I, th I should have given them personal parachutes. Oh, okay. Hold on. I cannot see anything around here, that's the problem. Come on! <laughs> 46 meters per second! And she survived! <laughs> I'm pretty sure this, this is not supposed to happen. Oh man, that was really awful. Uh, yeah, and because I did it live, I completely forgot to record the launch of the second vehicle. So we can just go back and watch it on Twitch TV if you really care. But yeah, I just flew the trajectory in a sane manner. A little steeper, a little, uh, a little less aggressive on that gravity turn. And of course I got myself into orbit with a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a shimmy, but no other real technical problems. Actually, there is a major technical problem with this entire design, and that is I included a recycling module because I thought I still needed a recycling module on my space station. And you know what? I already have a recycling module on my space station, so this this is a, a sort of redundant chunk of hardware right now. I may have to do some redesign or I don't know... In previous series, when I've built space stations, I've tended to build them out in the hangar beforehand and then split them into multiple spacecraft. Whereas this time, uh, I guess I haven't been so careful. I haven't got copies of my spacecraft all built out. And it's just being assembled after the fact, which is a really bad idea if you're trying to build a coherent structure in space. Then you end up with problems like, you know, flying fuel tanks through solar panels or not having enough solar panels. I mean, this has just been an exercise in having and causing trouble. But yeah, I'm always very much of the opinion that the problems that I didn't anticipate are much more amusing to deal with rather than, you know, having all my time spent on planning. I am kind of flying this whole space program by the seat of my pants, to be honest. And when I say pants, I mean underwear, obviously, because I'm British. I grew up in Britain and my mind thinks of underwear when I hear the word pants. I remember reading my kids a book and it had a guy with wearing stilts having a long pair of pants to cover them. And I just couldn't help of him having, you think of him having long underwear. Anyway, um, I have extraneous hardware here, 
we're going to try a new deorbiting technique. Uh, it's uh, a little interesting. Actually, disable stability control for this. And there we go. So that's going to go off. And stability control, that thing should remain pretty stable because it's. Uh... Oh. Right, so that thing is going to remain stable because it's spinning. You see that? That is my patented deorbiting technique. Look at that. Now I'm too far away to switch, but this thing will run out of fuel momentarily. And then I can do the docking. See, if you don't have these things spinning... Uh-oh. Awesome! I was going to say, the thing will inevitably fall out of alignment, and then you don't know where it could go. <laughs> I honestly did not expect this to happen, but the Kraken... <laughs> the Kraken can touch the world in ways that I have never yet figured out. As, as long as we've got our periaps dropping, this thing should just, like, descend really, really quickly. Indeed, old me was absolutely correct. It did descend very, very quickly, putting an end to its short life. But oh, what a glorious life and what a fitting ending. A Viking funeral of the greatest speed possible. Look, we get Mach effects and everything as it plummets towards the water. Unlike those other ones, this surely will disintegrate upon impact. Bingo! Yes, completely obliterated. Thank goodness, I was beginning to think that that water was just, like, made of soft cushions or something. I should probably really start figuring out stage recovery at some point, because I'm rapidly running out of cash. Anyway, yeah, spacecraft, docking, we've all seen this happen before, so you just need to very carefully put it in the right place and the right orientation. Now you'll notice that I have aligned the spacecraft with the rotation axis in the nav ball, but that is not in the right place, is it? So I rotate everything around, very carefully put stuff in there, move in. I'm going in for the kill, I'm doing it for the thrill. I'm getting to making sure you'll understand. Yeah, something like that. There, there we go, excellent. Excellent positioning there. Um, although I've realized now that I need to rotate it 90 degrees to make sure the docking ports are accessible. Well, I'll do that, and then I'll be back in the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.